What if I told you the universe might not exist until someone looks at it? Sounds insane, right? But this is one of the most shocking ideas in modern physics. Believe it or not, some of the world's leading scientists think that reality as we know it only shows up when someone's paying attention. And we're not talking science fiction here. This is quantum mechanics, the same science behind lasers, microchips, the sun. And it also says that particles can exist in multiple places at once until someone observes them. This phenomenon is called the collapse of the wave function. But what makes it collapse? That question is one of the biggest mysteries in modern science. And the weirdest part? There's no solid answer, just competing theories, and each one is stranger than the last. Some scientists believe it's the act of observing that makes reality snap into place. Others claim that all possibilities happen, just in separate parallel versions of the universe. And some go even further, suggesting that without consciousness, there is no reality at all. In this video, we're diving deep into these mind-bending ideas. And if you think you've heard this before, think again. Because understanding the collapse of the wave function isn't just about physics. It's about questioning reality itself. It's about asking, does the world even exist when nobody's watching? So, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because what you're about to see might just change how you see the universe. Picture yourself in a lab. In front of you, a quantum particle, maybe an electron or a photon, is heading toward a slit. You expect it to act like a normal particle, taking a clear path, but it doesn't. It behaves like a wave, as if it's everywhere at once. Then, you decide to measure it. You install a detector, a camera, a sensor, and suddenly, as if by magic, the electron chooses a path. It stops being a wave and becomes a particle. Just because you looked, this is what we call the collapse of the wave function, one of the strangest and most mind-bending phenomena in modern physics. It's as if the universe itself is waiting for your attention before deciding what to become. But this raises an unavoidable question. Why does this happen? What exactly causes the collapse? And this is where the theories split and the philosophical rabbit hole opens. The first one, called the Copenhagen Interpretation, suggests that reality is undefined until someone observes it, a world of probabilities that becomes real only when it's measured. The second, the Many Worlds Interpretation, says that all possibilities actually happen but in different universes. When you observe something, you're not collapsing anything, you're just finding out which reality you're in. And the third, perhaps the most mind-bending, is quantum idealism, the idea that consciousness is fundamental, that the universe only exists because it's being perceived, that without mind, there's no matter. Each of these interpretations tries to answer the same question, what is real? and none of them are universally accepted. All of them have brilliant defenders, all of them have gaps, but all of them share something in common. They force us to reevaluate everything we think we know about the world. Now let me ask you this, which of these views sounds more plausible to you? Is the world waiting for you to look at it to exist, or does it keep going, even in the dark? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Let's keep going. The story begins in 1927. A group of scientists gathers in Brussels for one of the most important meetings in modern physics, the Solvay Conference. Einstein, Bohr, Schrodinger, Heisenberg, all discussing a new and deeply strange phenomenon, the quantum world. At that moment, classical physics, with its rigid predictable laws, was collapsing under the weight of something far weirder. At the center of the confusion, a concept, the wave function. It doesn't describe where a particle is, but where it could be. And the strangest part, before being measured, the particle exists, somehow, 
in all those places at once. It sounds like magic, but it's pure math. The wave function is an equation, and this equation collapses. The moment we measure, all the possibilities vanish, and one single reality appears. But why? The Copenhagen interpretation proposed by Niels Bohr was the first attempt to answer that. According to Bohr, there is no definite reality before measurement. The wave function is all there is, and it only collapses when we interact with the system, when we observe it. In other words, before we look, reality is just a cloud of probabilities. When we look, it becomes real. Observation creates reality. Not everyone liked that idea. Einstein hated it. He said, do you really believe the moon is not there when you're not looking at it? For him, reality should exist independently of the observer. But quantum physics doesn't seem to agree with him. To understand it better, imagine the famous double-slit experiment. An electron is fired at a barrier with two openings. If you don't observe, it creates an interference pattern typical of waves. But if you set up a detector to see which slit it goes through, the pattern changes. The electron behaves like a particle. It's as if the very act of observing forces the particle to choose. But what does it mean to observe? Here's where it gets tricky. Because if measurement is the key moment, then the observer becomes massively important. And that opens the door to something much more philosophical. Consciousness. Does the universe need someone conscious to exist? That question makes many physicists uncomfortable, so they look for alternatives. One of them is the many worlds interpretation, proposed by Hugh Everett in the 1950s. And here things get even wilder. Everett says the wave function never collapses. Never. What happens is that all possibilities come true, but in different universes. If a particle could be in two places, then the universe splits in two, one where it's in place A, another where it's in place B. And when you observe, you're just entering one of those universes. The other versions of you go on living in the others. Yes, that means there are infinite versions of you, living every possibility that could have happened. You picked coffee this morning, somewhere another you picked tea, another stayed in bed, another never existed. This theory removes the observer from the equation. Reality exists. All realities exist. The price? An infinite number of universes, branching every fraction of a second. Sounds absurd, but it's mathematically elegant. It solves the collapse problem without invoking consciousness. But it's not exactly comforting. Because in this model, you're never in control. You're just one version of yourself being carried along by the collapse of possibilities. And that's where a third path appears. One that asks, what if it's not about particles or observers? What if it's about perception? This is the proposal of quantum idealism, an interpretation inspired by ancient ideas, but with modern implications. It says, reality doesn't exist outside consciousness. Instead of a mind observing the world, it's the world that exists within the mind. This doesn't mean everything is an illusion, but it means everything is experience. And without experience, there is no existence. If that sounds mystical, consider this. Never in the history of science have we proven that anything exists outside our perception. The sound of an explosion, the light of a star, the touch of your skin, all of it happens inside your mind. And what if the wave function only collapses when consciousness perceives the outcome? That would place the mind as the foundation of reality, not a product of it. This idea divides opinions. Many scientists dismiss it as metaphysics dressed as physics, but others argue maybe it's the only way to explain what we see because no interpretation is problem-free. Copenhagen needs an observer. Many worlds needs infinite universes, and idealism needs a complete revolution in what we call reality. But one thing is certain, all these theories 
are trying to answer the same discomfort. Is reality solid and objective, or is it a construction, something that only takes shape when someone is present? Have you ever wondered if maybe the universe depends on you to exist? Now, let's imagine a hypothetical but entirely possible scenario. An astronaut floats alone in deep space, thousands of light years from any other human. He points a detector at a single photon. No one else is watching. No transmission to Earth. No one to read the data. If he performs the measurement, does the collapse happen? This question seems simple, but it destroys the foundation of the Copenhagen interpretation. Because if the observer is necessary, then who is observing in this case? The astronaut? The detector? The universe? Or no one? And what if the measurement occurs, but the data is never read? Does it still cause a collapse? These are the questions quantum physics can't answer, and maybe never will. Because what's at stake here isn't just science. It's the very definition of existence. Let's step back for a moment. Classical physics gave us a mechanical world, a universe governed by predictable laws, where every cause leads to an effect, like gears in a clock. Quantum physics, on the other hand, gave us a probabilistic world, where particles pop in and out of existence, disappear without warning, and refuse to have defined positions or velocities at the same time. A world where reality only seems real when someone's paying attention. It's not just strange, it's uncomfortable because it forces us to rethink our place in the universe. In classical physics, we're just passive observers, at best, passengers in a vast machine. But in quantum mechanics, we might be co-creators of reality. And that leads us to another idea. What if wave function collapse isn't a physical event, but an informational one? Some physicists propose that collapse happens when information becomes irretrievable. In other words, it's not about measurement, but about the irreversibility of that measurement. In this model, the universe is an information processing system. Reality is the output of a computation and collapse occurs when a path of possibilities becomes locked in, unwound. Yes, it sounds like science fiction, but it's also the foundation of many quantum computing models. Now let's pull this thread to its limit. Imagine a future where we create ultra-realistic simulations. Simulations where conscious beings emerge, even if only digitally. If these entities can observe, measure, and cause wave functions to collapse inside their simulation, then for them, that's reality. Now think, if they can't tell whether they're in a simulation, and we can't either, how can we know we're not in one? That's the basis of Nick Bostrom's simulation hypothesis. If it's possible to simulate consciousness, and if advanced civilizations would want to do it, then it's far more likely that we're in a simulation than in the original universe. And the wave function collapse? It's just part of the code, a clever computational trick to save resources. Render the world only when someone is looking. Sounds absurd. But if it's true, collapse isn't physical or philosophical or mystical, it's technical. Just a line of code in the operating system of reality which raises an even more unsettling question, who's running the code? That line of thinking brings us right back to the starting point, consciousness. Because even if we're in a simulation, we're still conscious. And that consciousness, that feeling of being, remains the greatest mystery of all. Science doesn't know where it comes from. Philosophy can't fully explain it. And every interpretation of quantum mechanics, Copenhagen, many worlds, idealism, simulation, each in its own way, places consciousness at the core of the puzzle. Maybe the problem is the question itself. Maybe the mistake is trying to understand wave function collapse as an event. Maybe it's a consequence, 
a consequence of our attempt to translate the world into something we can grasp. The universe might not behave logically, predictably or comfortably. It might be contradictory. It might be every possible state until our minds, desperate for clarity, force it to choose. Maybe the collapse of the wave function is a reflection of our own collapse in the face of infinity. Because in the end, maybe the universe isn't hiding. Maybe it's simply beyond what we can see. But if the universe needs consciousness to exist, then that leads to another question. Where does consciousness come from? If the mind can collapse possibilities, can shape reality, what exactly is it? A byproduct of the brain, an emergent phenomenon, or something older, deeper, more fundamental than space and time itself? And if only what is perceived exists, does time depend on observation too? Could the past, present, and future all be just different versions of the same illusion? These aren't just philosophical questions. They challenge the way we live, think, and feel. Because maybe, the boundary between mind and world never really existed. Maybe you're not inside the universe. Maybe the universe is inside you. And if that makes you uncomfortable, good. Reality should make us uncomfortable sometimes. That's how we grow. And if you're still watching, it means this topic resonates with something deep inside you. So now, let YouTube guide you to the next step. There's a video right here on the screen that takes this journey even further. Click it and come with me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.